It's beautiful, spectacular looking core, a lot of sulfide, it's very heavy. Um, and, uh, you know, as a systematic approach, we drilled it at 40 meter centers, mm -hmm. if you will. So when the resource came out, some 70% of it was in the higher confidence ca uh, in indicated category. Hello to viewers and welcome to Assay TV, where we're catching up with Staveley Minerals, the company's focused on exploring for copper, gold and silver projects in Western Victoria. I'm now joining Chris Cairns, Executive Chairman and Managing Director. Good day, Chris. Uh, good day, Adam. How are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. And thanks for taking time to catch up with us um, amid your busy schedule. I'm sure you're on the road. Um, so let's take it from the top for an update on some viewers who might be slightly new to the company. Could you give us a rundown? Sure, sure. Um, <clears throat> well, prior to uh, establishing Stavely Minerals, myself and the team uh, ran a company called Integra Mining. Um, we made some discoveries and built a gold mine east of Kalgoorlie, uh, commissioned in 2010, operated for two years and then uh, or two and a half. And our next door neighbor, Silver Lake Resources, made us an offer of $425 million for the project uh, and the company. So we stepped aside and, and thought that was a good deal. But the team wanted to uh, stick together. So this pro uh, Thursday's Gossam project or the Stavely project came across my desk. I didn't really like it at the time, just on paper, um, but took a site visit. And when I got out there and had a look at the rocks, I thought, oh my God, these people just do not understand what they've got hold of. Right. So we bought, we bought the project privately for $2.8 million, did some geophysics, worked up some targets and brought it to market in 2014, raising $6 million, the only uh, IPO in on the ASX in the resources sector in that year. It was a pretty right. shitty time. Um, but we, then we got to business and we started drilling some holes and the holes got progressively deeper and deeper. And uh, But in the journey, um, we had a couple of intercepts on these high grade structurally controlled mineralization. And we had an intercept down at a depth of about 850 meters in hole 44, um, wedge one, you know, it's 18 meters at 3.6% copper, almost half a gram gold. And, and one of our consultants said, well, look, you know, you, you're just a junior explorer. You don't have the cash and resources to be drilling these great big holes. Um, why don't you look for this high grade structurally controlled stuff near to surface? The next hall after he had said that was hall 50 discovery hall. We got uh, 32 meters at 6% copper gram gold oh. from 62 meters depth. And, mm. um, that was in September 2019. From there, we have just for the past couple of years just been drilling the resource out and we put out the resource in June this year, um, 9.3 million tons at one quarter percent copper, a quarter gram gold, I think it's seven gram silver. But we also demonstrated during that drilling program that the grades seem to be getting uh, better at depth and that the style of mineralization was changing from a uh, magma load style system down into what we would call in the geology space intermediate sulfidation which is transitional towards the porphyry so um, you know we've always had this thought that the porphyry was out there um, and uh, yeah we're we're very excited about an upcoming program where we're going to drill a pattern of six holes looking to discover that porphyry at depth excellent yeah wonderful thanks for the rundown there and you know great Great grades, great results. It's quite exciting exploration work. Um, could you just delve into a little bit more into the mineral resource estimate that you put out uh, earlier this year? You touched on it um, just now about um, some of the um, the tonnage and, and and what you found. Sure. So the the focus really was on that shallow near surface material and mineralization starts at surface, and that as I say, the focus was say from surface down to about three hundred meters depth. Um, we used uh, 100 and, would have been 120 drill holes to define a, the old diamond drilling. Um, it's beautiful, spectacular looking core, a lot of sulfide, it's very heavy. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, as a systematic approach, we drilled it at 40 meter centers, mm -hmm. if you will. So when the resource came out, some 70% of it was in the higher confidence ca uh, in indicated category. And, um, 
you know, so we, we didn't want to have to go back and redrill the damn thing. We just do it properly the first time. Um, it All of the resource uh, for the open pit is contained within a US $6 a pound copper uh, optimized open pit. So it's all constrained. It's not unconstrained. And um, the, there was some concern that that mineralization didn't continue underneath a low angle structure that we felt only had a little bit of offset, say 50 meters offset. Um, and uh, so we drilled a couple of deeper holes just to you know, really address that concern. Um, hole 173 got um, 43 meters at 2.6% copper and 0.4 grams gold, uh, including a couple of higher gram, higher grade intercepts. And then the last hole in the entire program, the deepest one uh, along the plunge of this mineralization. And when we're talking deep, I'm talking about 400 meters below surface, so not super deep for, from an underground perspective. Got 10.4 meters at 4.34% copper and 3.2 grams gold. And the interesting thing about that intercept is that the, the nature of the mineralization has changed and it's we see a, a hotter assemblage uh, being expressed at depth, which is not surprising if you were getting closer to a porphyry. But the important thing about that is that we see the gold grades approximating in grams per tonne approximating the copper grades. So a sub interval within that 10.3 uh, meters ended up being 4.9 meters at 6.75% copper and 6.43 grams gold. So the gold is right, really getting up there. So our, our sincere, you know, it makes sense when you think about the chemistry of these systems and they're, they're well understood. Um, so our thinking is that should we get to the porphyry a little bit further down, that it's going to be a gold rich copper porphyry. And, and that really makes a lot of difference in terms of the potential economics. Yeah, certainly. Fantastic. Very good. Okay, so coming switching back to, away from the trilogy for a minute and then onto the um, company itself. You've also announced you know recently capital raises uh, over the summer, very successful there. Um, can you tell us about that raise and then also how you're going to put the money to work and lead on to the, the drill program that you've got coming up? Yeah, look, uh, that raise was uh, was very difficult. Um, you know, the markets had just had a, a mm. really big hit, um, and uh, a lot of the resources space was was smashed in terms of share prices mm. uh, being reduced. So, and and it was a, a difficult raise to do. But under those conditions, where the share price had been uh, depressed, we decided that we weren't going to dilute excessively. Um, in an institutional placement. So we just did $4 million uh, to institutions, um, uh, one based here in the UK, Cornerstone, the raise, and then we were able to build around that. Um, so really kept that relatively modest. And then we opened up an SPP for existing shareholders to participate and just got overwhelmed with the response. Shareholders, I think, believe in the story and believe what we're trying to achieve um, you know, it's always been quite a technical story, but they responded to the extent of uh, applying for $5.3 million worth of stock in the SPP. And I've never seen an SPP exceed the institutional placement in magnitude. <laughs> so that was a first for me, um, but really gratifying in terms of the support that we have from our existing shareholders. So, you know, in terms of the dilution, it, it's less concerning when it goes to your existing shareholders. So we were happy that, that they were able to pick up stock at those prices. Um, you know, it's 15 cents. The sh shares are now 18 cents. So we've rebounded a little bit. But upcoming, you know, we're well funded for this upcoming drill program starting in mid-January, targeting that, that porphyry at depth. So um, we won't have to come to market until after we've uh, executed that program and we know what we've got. Yep, absolutely. So that's the catalyst to look for for next year, really, is that campaign ramping up as we uh, head into January. Yeah, that's right. And and in the interim, between now and Christmas, we've got some regional exploration programs uh, mm -hmm. going on. Uh, we had a big push last year um, in, in Western Victoria. Uh, exploration is a bit seasonal in that the winter is very, very wet and you can't get into the paddocks without making a great big mess. And it has been exceptionally wet this year. Um, in normal circumstances, we would expect to be uh, on the ground doing the, the regional exploration from the 1st of October. At the moment, I think we'll be lucky if we get on the ground by the 1st of December. But 
we do have a major program of follow-up exploration. So we did the initial exploration last year. We've got some excellent targets lined up that we just want to firm up a little bit more before we come in with the diamond rigs and test those as well. So there's there's news flow coming really hopefully from about Christmas onwards, but the big bang stuff is definitely the deep diamond drilling looking for the porphyry and starting sort of second week of January. Yeah, excellent. Well, lots to look out for there. Um, just last month, there was an um, announcement around uh, targeting of um, uh, a rare earths um, anomaly, I believe, um, uh, specifically for uh, neodymium, presidinium, et cetera. Can you just talk about those and then how that might also fit into the overall strategy as well, or whether there's um, a specific um, agenda for that to complement what you've got going on already? Yeah, look, um, you know, to be... Uh, we were a little bit surprised uh, at that result. It was part of a regional reconnaissance a soil auger program. And when the, the, the assays came in, they were anomalous for uh, cesium and lanthanum. And uh, we don't normally uh, assay for a suite of rare earths, mm. but those are rare earths and, and they came up in uh, elevated quantities. So we ran that sample through for a rare earth suite. And, Lo and behold, came up with 0.24% uh, total rare earths plus citrium uh, and uh, dominated really by the neodymium and praseodymium uh, results. So that's those magnet metals are the ones that you would like to see. Um, so this is a, a target that uh, is, is early, early stage, and we, all, we will be getting on the ground there and doing additional soil auger work before we bring in an air core rig. Um, which what I would anticipate we would do in this in this field season, we, we'd have it drilled. Um, but when you look at the magnetics in having seen that result, you, I look at the magnetics now and I go, I can see a little intrusion there, a little pimple in the magnetics with an alteration halo around it. And so it's, it, it is looking like a, a peralkaline or carbonatite related um, uh, anomalism, and whether it turns into something uh, you know, of a similar character to Mount Weld, and I'm not making any allegations in terms of scale and grade or anything like that, but it appears to be of that type of yeah. mineralization. So, yeah, that's an exciting uh, aspect of what we're doing. And if we if we get onto it and it turns into something real, what we do with it, you know, in, in terms of strategy discussions, we'll deal with it then and be a nice problem to have. Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, Better problem to have, you know, additional assets, whether it's a spin out or what have you. And you know, with with with, with the global need for minerals across the board, yeah, these these are good things to have uh, in your yeah, cache. Absolutely. And and look, the uh, Australian governments, both at the federal level and also at the state level, are are very attuned yeah. to critical minerals and the security of those critical minerals. And so it's a it's an interesting space at the moment in terms of government assistance. And if you look like you've got something real. Um, then uh, uh, you would expect that you would get both financial and permitting assistance in terms of fast tracking these types of deposits. So, uh, an interesting space. Yeah, fantastic. Well, very good. Well, look, Chris, thanks so much for taking us through an update of where you're at. So much going on and, and really, really very positive on the geology and the progress. So, we look forward to catching up again on SATV to see how you're heading into next year. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks.